Good morning, friends. Thanks so much for gathering with us online today. Today we are look, looking at being alive in Jesus. Over the next couple of days, there's going to be some events happening. The Super Bowl is on tonight, big football championship game. And as well, Valentine's Day is on Monday. So I want to play a little game with us this morning. What do you love more than football? So just write in the comments below, what do you love more than football? We pray that you are encouraged and challenged today. Just have a few announcements. I want to let you know that we have something called Reach that happens every Thursday after school from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. This is open to students that are in grades 6 to 8. And right now on our Thursday night, our Thursdays after school, there's Nerf Wars that you can be a part of. There's a drama club. There's a cool bead design craft that you can make. And this is really a chance to meet new friends and to ask their questions about who Jesus is. Also something coming up is called Amplify. And this is February 18th to the 19th. This is open to ages 12 to 18. The cost is only $25. This includes your services, meals, skiing and snowboarding pass for the day. And we are looking right now for donations of pop, juice, water. But please let your 12 to 18 year olds know. Register them today for Amplify. If you'd like more information, please talk to Pastor Sarah. Also, we have something called Rooted that's every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. This is open to those students in grades 8 to 12. And they do things like road trips, you get to meet new people, and learning how to do life with Jesus. And lastly, we have something called Kids Life that happens every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. open to those kids that are in JK to grade five. This is a place where Kids can make new friends and discover who Jesus is. Well, we're continuing our series today, Life with Jesus. We've been exploring, really digging into the book of Colossians, looking at what Paul was wanting to say to the church and what he wants to say to us today. The main idea has been throughout these, these past weeks is that what could life look like with Jesus? So today we are looking at being alive in Jesus. I want to tell you a, um, a story about a, a person, a kind of a, once I say her name, um, a lot of people will recognize her from TV and from movies. Her name is Candace Cameron Bure. And a lot of people really had this idea of because where she stands today that she must have grown up in a Christian home. But she actually grew up in a home that didn't really talk about Jesus. There wasn't really a lot of conversation about Jesus. It was when she was 12 years old that she decided to accept Jesus to be a follower of Jesus. But during her teen years, church just wasn't really a priority for her. And she eventually learned later in life as she had kids and had a family that God's standard of goodness is different than the world's standard. She saw herself as, as a sinner in front of God that needed the great love of Jesus. And knowing this truth led to real repentance and change. So a question to ask for you, first off as we're beginning, what needs to change for you to be alive in Jesus? Paul wrote these words in Colossians 3 verses 1 to 17 to show us what needs to change so that we can be alive in Jesus. And this is what it says. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life was hidden with Christ in God. 
When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. And you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now put away all the following anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your Creator. In Christ there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom and teaching, and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Okay. Breathe. It's going to be okay. We are going to get through this together. Paul has just finished talking about in Colossians 2 verses 20 to 23, the implications of dying with Christ. Now Paul has shifted focus in Colossians 3 to being alive in Jesus. For this to take place, we need to set our minds and our hearts above. We need to look to Jesus. Paul was letting the Colossians know that one day Jesus was going to return. But until that happens, you can be alive in Jesus today. So here's what needs to take place to be alive in Jesus. The first thing is, is that some areas of our life need to be removed. Erwin McManus, in an article called Jesus Was a Genius, which he wrote for Relevant Magazine, says this, What Jesus came to do is reestablish our humanity to help us reclaim what was lost. What Jesus came to do is reestablish our humanity to help us to reclaim what was lost. Colossians 3 verse 5 in the NLT version says this, Put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Me, I know for me, myself, there are areas of my life that I would be embarrassed. I would be horrified. I would be so shameful if you knew about them. For us to be truly alive in Jesus, we need to abandon, drop, get rid of, Get out of it. Get it out of you. Let some areas die in our life. Paul gives this list in Colossians 3 verses 5 to 10. And I just want to kind of go over this list. The first thing is he talked about sexual immorality. Any sexual intercourse outside of marriage. No good. Don't do it. Impurity. Immoral behavior. The third thing, lust. This overmastering passion that just overwhelms you, overtakes you. And some people think that lust is just a sexual thing, but you can be lusting over food, over other things that, that just take control of you. Video games, overmastering passion. The fourth thing is evil desires, sin that has become enjoyable and comfortable. You want to avoid this. Greed. This is an unchecked hunger for physical pleasure. 
Simply, you want more. You feel that you are entitled to anything that you want. Anger. The seething hatred that you have. Number seven, wrath or rage. The state of actual angry deeds or words. You know, I really was thinking about this. And I don't know if you've ever watched Dude Perfect, but they have this rage monster um, that kind of shows up sometimes in their videos. But this rage where you're so angry in your words and deeds. Number eight, malice. This intent to cause hurt. Number nine, slander. A dishonoring a person. People that are made in the image of God. And then number ten, filthy language. Foul and abusive words that contaminate both the speaker and hearer. My question for you is what of this list or what do you know of in your life needs to be removed in your life? Paul here is he's begging. He's pleading with you for whatever it is that you need to be removed. Remove it completely. To investigate your own life before God, before these areas will destroy you. Colossians 3 verse 6 mentions the wrath of God. N.T. Wright in his commentary on Colossians thinks that the wrath of God means the reaction of true holiness, justice, and goodness to wickedness. A life where you choose to live without God. We have all walked this way of life. We have all walked at some point in our life without God. Maybe even now you are continuing to walk your life without God. Why would you want that? Or why would you want to go back to that life? Don't allow this wickedness to come into your house, into your life. Remove it. Colossians 3 verse 10 in the NLT says this, Learn to know your Creator and become like Him. We need a knowledge of God so that we can know the difference between good and evil and know the things that we need to remove from our life. The second thing is that some areas of our life need to be reshaped. I want to be a physically active person. I want to be in good shape. I want to look like I did when I was 18. But I'm older now. I have certain limitations, even though I want to convince myself I don't. But there still needs to be effort. There still needs to be discipline. There's still certain foods and restaurants and habits that I need to avoid. Paul gives a different list in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. Areas in our life that we need to embrace these things. The first thing that we see is compassion. This deep sensitivity to the needs and sorrows of others. We need more compassion. Kindness. A Christ-like attitude towards others. Humility. A readiness to give up our own rights for the benefits of other people. Thinking about other people better than ourselves. Number four is gentleness. Having or showing a mild, kind Our tender temperament, our character. Patience. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. A lot of us are patient as has reached its maximum. But we need to continue to strive to be people that are patient. Number six talks about bear with each other. What this is talking about is the respect for each other. Even if their behaviors seem very strange or odd to us or confusing. Learning how to handle difficult people. Number seven, forgiving grievances. Sometimes there's old feuds. There's things that happened in your before you were a Christian, before you were a follower of Jesus, past events and hurts. We need to somehow come to terms and to forgive those grievances. Love. The thing that unifies us all together is love. We need to be loving each other. Number nine is peace. 
not being interrupted or annoyed by worry, problems, noise, or unwanted actions. And the last thing is, is the gratitude. This attitude of thanksgiving. So on this list and looking at these areas, what are you going to allow on this list for the Holy Spirit to reshape you? Paul reminds us that just like Jesus forgave us, that we need to go and forgive others. And you might be thinking, but that was Jesus. He forgave, but we need to be striving to be more like Jesus. And we need to find ways to forgive other people. Paul then made this whole idea of this reshaping corporate, that we need to put aside our differences, our beliefs, our stereotypes, our assumptions to embrace true church community. So what do you think needs to change to reshape church community? The third area now. So the first thing is, is that there's some areas of our life that we need to be removed. Some of the things Paul was talking about, we need to remove those things from our life. And then some areas of our life need to be reshaped. We need to begin to to do these things again. We need to begin to to be more like Jesus. And then the third thing is is that church community needs to be reimagined. Colossians 3 verse 11 in the NIV says this, Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. The Colossians church was made up of people outside of the Jewish community. Those that were rooted very deeply in Jewish traditions. Warriors. Those that maybe had no formal education or training. Savages from remote areas in Asia. See, this church was wrestling through prejudice, racism, human injustices, church backgrounds. But for them, when it all boiled down to it, when it all came down to it, Jesus is for everyone and everyone needs Jesus. Colossians 3 verse 16 in the NLT says this, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. See, we as the church, we need to learn again who Jesus is. To begin to read through the biblical narrative of Jesus. To look to Jesus for true wisdom. We need to allow again thankfulness and gratitude to overflow into song. Paul mentioned a couple of different types of songs. He mentioned psalms. These were the songs that were spoken by the priests sang at the festivals, entering the temple. Probably they came right out of the book of Psalms. But see, these were celebration. We need to begin as a church to celebrate again. And then he mentioned hymns, these songs of praise, where they were just completely focused on who God is. We need to have a a healthy respect and awe of who God is. And then There were spiritual songs, and these were the new songs that were being written. Songs that had never been ever uttered before, and people were writing new songs. Today, there is a plethora of songs out there that are being sung and being written for the church today. We need to embrace them and sing these songs. So for you to be fully alive in Jesus, there are some areas of your life that need to be removed. You need to get rid of it. Get it out of your life. But then there's some areas of your life that need to be reshaped. You just have to kind of look at these areas and say, okay, there's compassion, there's love, there's patience. I just need to reshape those into my life again. And church community needs to be reimagined. We need to begin again to 
to, to look to Jesus, to begin to, to read the stories of Jesus, read the stories of Bible, look to the Bible for wisdom, begin to sing these songs again out of joyfulness and thankfulness and gratitude. We need to be celebrated. We need to have a healthy respect of who God is. So to continue the conversation, go back and read Colossians 3, verse 1 to 17. If you like podcasts, listen to this podcast. It's called Battle Ready, and it's with Aaron McManus and his son Aaron McManus. And I've listened to it many times, and it's so challenging. And they talk about current events, and they talk about the Bible and Jesus. It's just, it's just really good stuff to get into your mind and to your heart. And then ask, is there areas in my life that need to be removed? Is there areas in my life that the Holy Spirit needs to reshape? Or is there things in our church or in my life that need to be reimagined to be done again? Before we go, let me just let me just pray pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much for each person that's watching right now and I pray Lord God, that they would just use wisdom. And if there is areas in their life, if there's things that that Paul talked about, that they know they need to remove those from their life, that they would have the boldness and the courage to do that. Lord, I pray if there maybe is areas in their life that, that they just haven't done in a while, maybe they haven't practiced compassion or they haven't been very patient or forgiveness or love or gratitude, These are areas where you're working on them. You're working in their life. They just need to be reshaped. Oh Lord, I pray if if there's areas in our church or in their life that need to be reimagined again, to be reminded of the, the wisdom that's in the scriptures, to begin to rejoice again through worship and praise, to have a healthy respect of who God is, to sing new songs, to be grateful for for what you're doing. I pray you have so much good stuff still for the church. And I pray that we will reimagine what those great things could look like. So thank you for each person. Bless them, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I would just thank you so much for taking the time to join with us online today. Hey, here's something I could really use your help and support. I, I'm going to be uh, jumping in the Cat Bay Dip uh, on February the 26th. And I'm doing a little fundraiser to try to collect some money for Abundant Life Church community events. Our community dinners is a big part of it. And, and other things that we want to do in the community. I'm raising money to do that. So if you'd like to go and check out... Um, you can find a link on our Facebook page or on my own personal uh, Dan Richards Facebook page. But please go donate. I would just love whatever you can do to help. Uh, just in, I want to just pray this over you. It's from Colossians 3 verse 17. And this is what it says. And whatever you do, oh man, whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him.